Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is part two, a continuing look into object-oriented programming using C++. And we're actually following along with an example problem. This is not necessarily a lecture, this is more of a homework problem. And so if you need the understanding of part one, you do need the understanding of part one to continue with this. So please watch that video if you need the understanding of what we were trying to accomplish. So we're going to continue on part two. And now we have the GORG class requirements, which are going to be very similar for a lot of this uh, with the move. And so the only there's slight differences here. The name is always going to be George. Every GORG is named George. And there's a reason for that in the movie, but his name really isn't George. But there's a name, reason why every GORG has the same name. And so the health always starts with 30. And the Gorg always has five shield points and always has five maximum shield points. And so that's a little bit different. That screams out, I do not need to pass parameters for that since those things are always going to be set in stone. So the constructor is going to be uh, much simpler than the boobs. Uh, get function for name, health, and shield. Uh, there is nothing for maximum. We're just going to go with it. Uh, the is defeated function is identical. And then the gets attacked function is different. And we'll talk about that when we get to that because they have a different way of getting damaged. But other than that, once we have the Gorg class implemented and we already have the Boov class implemented, our final step here then is to change the main so we can actually have them battle it out and figure out who has the upper hand when it comes to the battles that are going to be fought at the end of the movie and so forth and so on. So that's where we're coming from. That's where we're going. And so just just to get just to you know get this thing going, I have the boov class here. Here's the boov.h, here's the boov.cpp. And so I'm going to go ahead and just so I don't have to type this all out over and over and over again, I'm going to go ahead and create a new .h file for the gorg. And I'm just going to go ahead and replace all that cool stuff and just say gorg 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 gorg. Okay, gorg gorg. I wonder if I'll have the same errors when I go to try to set this thing up. Maybe not this time. We'll see. And so I was saying earlier, like all of this stuff, name, health, and shield is all going to be automatically, it's, it's already set forth in stone. The name is George. The health is five. The shield is five. So I can get rid of all of that. And so now the get name, same. Get health, same. Get shield, same. Is defeated, same. Gets attacked is going to be different. But then it's saying we have the name, the health, and the shield when it comes to member variables. And we're also now going to introduce the idea of a max shield. But that's it. .h file is done. It really is because that's, we've, we've established there's a lot of similarities between the two classes. The, sim the differences are going to be more in the code, the, you know, the body of the gets attacked function and the body of the constructor than anything else. But a lot of the stuff comes along for free. And that's why I'm just going to basically just copy paste this and just change boov into gorg and call it a day here. So let's, and then, and then fix up for the, uh, what the gets attacked function is supposed to do. So I'm going to go ahead and create gorg.cpp. Go ahead and pop this thing in. And let's see. I'm not going to do a global search and replace. I'm just going to go ahead and do this for the, oops. And that should eliminate a lot of that red once this thing gets going because now it understands what's happening. Oops, I put the gorg in the, right, the wrong place. And so gorg gorg, again, just got to fix this up. And you say, okay, the name is George. Oops, Georger. The health is going to be 30. The shield is going to be 5. The max shield is going to be 5. The constructor is done. Okay, get name, get health, get shield, is defeated. They're all the same. And now I just have to go ahead, eliminate this out. Yep, and everything's fixed up over here now. And now we have to fix up the gets attacked function. I'm going to go over and get that information right this moment. And you'll see it pop up here instantly. Magic. So here it goes. So it's two separate actions. So the other, the, the, the boov might have had something that was a little more intertwined. But these are two completely independent actions. 
And so the, f the first one here says, you can always get, like we discussed in the last time around, whenever it says such as percentage of the time do nothing, get rid of it. Because why should I write code that does nothing? That's just a waste of processing power. So 15% of the time. So let's see, I'll, I'll say roll a 100-sided die. And if the roll is less than, so oh, and the, again, this gives me a value from 0 to 99. So if I say, okay, if it, as long as it's less than 15, that'll give me all the values from 0 to 14. That's 15%. That's 15 possibilities. 0 to 14 is 15% of the possibilities. Then I'm going to add 1 to the shield value. And so if plus plus shield, it, there's many ways to do this. I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm just, you know, whatever. I'm just doing the way I'm doing it here. So if I add 1 to my shield and it ends up being greater than the max shield, then just reverse co uh, course and say minus minus shield. That's all. That's that's the whole first part here. Like try to add one, and if it's all if it ends up being greater than the shield, bring it back so it's its max. You could use a min fun or a max function or a min function. There's as I say, there's multiple ways to go about doing that. But that part is done. So that's there you go with that. That's that's the first action. And now the second action is semi-similar, at least to get started. I don't need, I'm not going to int roll it, but I'll just say, okay, coming back down here, say 35% of the time nothing occurs. So I'll just change it up, right? So just say instead of 15, make it 35. Oops. Oh no. Oh goodness, what am I doing? There we go. I don't know what's happening anymore. 34 is 35% of the time. Uh, do nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's if I wanted to do nothing. 65% of the time I do want to do something. Sorry about that. I'm talking myself into all sorts of nonsense here. So let's fix this up and say less than 65, which will give me 0 to 64, which is 65% of the time. What I'm going to do is shield minus equals 1 plus rand mod 2. So coming back again. If this the rand mod two will give me either a zero or a one. If it gives me a zero, the shield will be reduced by one. If it gives me a one, the shield will be reduced by two. So shield takes one to two damage. And now we're saying, okay, if the shield value is less than zero, then do random five to ten damage. And this is on the health side. So five plus random 6. Because if this thing gives me a 0, I get 5 out of the whole deal. If this thing gives me, the, the largest number this can give me is a 5, 5 plus 5, it'll reduce by 10. And that's it. This is, the Gorg is done. Presuming I did something, didn't do something right or wrong or whatever. But that's pretty much the getting the Gorg going. Do the first action, do the second action, completely independent actions from one another. And now we're ready to, uh, to draw out and write out the main function and see who wins more often and see if there's any actual errors in our programming code. And, because I think I know what the percentages are supposed to be, but that's the fun of programming. You don't really know until you go and try to implement. Okay, so here we go. This time around, we like, I think I've told you guys, we know what we're sending the boob out into battle with, like if you want to think about it, his health is going to be 31, his shield is going to be 13, that's what we're, that's the givens from, that's the answer to part one of this video series. And so how many simulations? We'll still run the million simulations. This time around, like round survived is going to be replaced with Boove wins. And then if you want to have Gorg wins as well. Okay. And so we're going to have a million, one million simulations. I have my Boove. I'm going to need my Gorg. Uh, I'll call him George. And then what you see here is this gives me an error because I don't have the include file up here. And then what's funny is you think this works. Everything screams out. But what happens if I do George dot? See, nothing comes up. And it gives me an error, and it tells me that expression must have class type. This is one of those weird little C++ things. 
This is a function prototype. This is not an, a declaration, a construction of an object. This is, because in, with three parameters, but this is not. So if you want to set it up, you do it like this without this. And now I can actually say George dot. It's just a syntax thing. See how everything comes up now? And I don't need to, but I don't need to pass in any parameters, remember, because everything is going to be generated automatically in the constructor, the name, the health, the shield, and the max shield. Okay, so there we go. We've got that going for us. So every time around we have a new boov object, we have a new gorg object, and now we just have to continue on and say, well, either one of them, and there's, of course, again, there's many different ways to make this thing work. And so while both of them are not defeated, so this will fall through, that will finally kick out of this while loop when one of the two of these guys has been defeated. And so just to say, we, all, we, we said that the, the George character always gets attacked first. That's one of the rules according to the, the, everything we're trying to do. So George gets attacked if George is defeated equals equals false then we do the o attack and again there's many ways you could use breaks all sorts of crazy nonsense good ways and bad ways to do this but george gets attacked and as long as he doesn't get defeated we whack him and we whack o a lot of students seem to think there's ties there's no double knockouts because you know like if i attacked you why would i die right so, and i killed you he's like you, i defeated you sorry we're not killing anybody we defeated you but you get the point. So o, uh, George gets attacked. As long as he's still around, he attacks O, and then we come back around. And this is just to make sure, I suppose, that George isn't defeated somehow before we get started at all. So we, the loop is pretty well uh, maintained here. I think that's all we need. Again, I'm doing a lot. Normally, I would compile and run, compile and run, but I'm doing a lot here. So there's, there's a lot of points of failure. There's nothing wrong with compiling every so often. And I'll, some, you know, depending on the stuff, you can't really do that in the real world because sometimes it takes minutes for things to compile. But right here, everybody's happy. So now here we go. Let's finish. Let's figure out what's going on here. So let's see the number of boov. Per, let's say boov percentage. Boov percentage is equal to the number of. Oh, duh. When we kick out of here, always ahead talking and thinking and doing. When I kick out of this loop. Only one of the two of them will have been defeated because that was the whole point of this. So I can say, when I come out of here, I can say if George is defeated, then increase the boov wins. It's getting dark in here, so it's getting hard for me to see the keyboard. I'm not a button pecker per se, but it is getting hard to be the keyboard in here. So one of the two of them. So if George is, if George was defeated, the Boov wins. But if he wasn't, then Boov had to have, the Boov had to have won. I'm sorry, the Gorg would have had to have won, because George is not defeated, and the Boov was defeated. So that's perfectly fine. And again, this has to be outside of the while loop because we have to reach a conclusion before we fall through and determine one of the two end cases. All right, now I can come down here and say, okay, boov percentage is equal to number of boov wins divided into, and then so this is where using this thing, this thing is a const int number of simulations. So I can go ahead, oops, oh, boov, capital W, uh, static cast it to a double because it's an int, doble. There we go times 100 give me some percentages here and i'm not going to i'm not going to uh, presume that i know anything about this i'm going to do the calculations to make sure i'm not cuz i could just say 100 minus but i'm like well what if i did the calculations wrong what if it doesn't add up to 100 I, i'm you know i'm false falsifying my way into thinking that uh, that is true so gorg wins okay that's it and see out, I'm just gonna keep it simple, I'm not gonna write, I would be more detailed if I was doing this for real rather than just a tiny example here. Tiny example. I'm downplaying everything we've been doing then by saying that. Yeah. 
and something like this, right? So what is wrong with the end? Oh, duh. I'm not using namespaces, not the professional way to do things. So there we go. Let's see what happens. Hit the magic run button. Prepare yourself for errors. Build, rebuild. Holy moly, it, ran, it compiled and linked. Oh boy. Here we go. I'm thinking 54, 46 are the percentages. Let's see what pops up. Hey, look at that. Right around 54 and 46. So my, my initial uh, results have been verified by me doing this a second time. Many students have agreed with me on this assignment, and some have not. So it's just I have not heard anybody claim that this is an incorrect result. So I'm pretty good with this. I, I can't believe the boob actually has a better chance of winning than the gorg because we've been training. We've been getting ready for this moment. Otherwise, oh my goodness, right? It would not. So again, this is how, like, you know, this isn't even taking into account number of rounds or anything like that. They're just fighting off against each other. And remember from the part one, the boob can withstand 12 rounds. And so therefore, that's slightly better than what the gorg can withstand. The gourd can withstand slightly, maybe 11. And so there's your, basically this is like, a, at the, <laughs> this was a craps table. This is betting on a six or an eight rather than betting, you know, betting against the seven. It's a, it's a five to four odds, basically five out of nine to four out of nine, the chance probabilities of this working. All right, so, and of course, it's never gonna be precise. Every time I run this, it's gonna be slightly different because of, because that's what randomness is, right? It's like, but, but, but I do know that over time, and over more and more simulations, the law of large numbers tells me that the percentages will get closer and closer to the real percentage. And you know, say there's no there's no easy way to compute this rather than just simulating over and over and over again. Well, there, there's always different ways to do it. So let's. But anyway, so that covers part two. So to say we wrote some code to handle the wins and the losses for each of the people, the each of the combatants. We've printed that all out. We figured out here's the gorg. Very similar structure here to what the boob has when it comes to the implementation and the header. Like we barely changed anything for a lot of this stuff. And this this gets attacked function was uh, wasn't yeah, maybe it's not so challenging now that we're kind of running through it a little bit more. But you can see that it definitely uh, definitely got us to where we think. We have the correct answer. I put in way too many, uh, way too many uh, things, but it'll come up. Hopefully, it'll come up while I'm talking and finishing up our discussion here. So that covers part two. So when uh, part three, up oh, there we go. It's the same. Yeah, you know, 54 to 46. I mean, we it only changed by like two or three hundredths of a percent either way for it running this the simulation with many more uh, many more rounds. But anyway, so the, the end of part two. So now part three, what, you know, the final part of this is going to be what we call refactoring our code. We're going to take the boov, we're going to take the gorg, and we're going to combine them, create a base class. We're going to teach you inheritance, polymorphism, and virtual functions and that sort of thing. And we're going to teach you how to create a competitor class that's a base, and then the gorg and the boov will derive from that and basically fix everything up and have everything work exactly the same. So I say refactoring is a term that means to take time to change your code around to make it more flexible, make it more powerful, make it, you know, what you know, inheritance and polymorphism, add all those cool topics, yet still not change any of the behavior of the code under the hood. So the end of part three will the this will look exactly the same. We'll get the same numbers if we did it right, but the code will look completely different. We're gonna add another class and rework the main function. We're done, well, let's say we're done with the implementation side. We're gonna to have to change up the way we implement stuff on this end with virtual functions. But uh, as always, swordb at cod.edu. Great way to get a hold of me when you have questions. You can comment here on YouTube as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I'm looking forward to refactoring and inheritance and polymorphism part three. I hope you are too. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye guys.